In the last two lectures, I introduced arrays, uh, specifically arrays of integers. You could also do something very similar for arrays of doubles and floats. But I want to talk about something rather special. It's uh, arrays of characters, which are called strings in C. So I'm just going to copy one of the files to string.c. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this. Okay. Here's how we declare and initialize strings in C. They're character arrays. So character array x or string x, we're not notice we're not giving it a size here. Okay, just left bracket, right bracket equals curly bracket. I R S T. This is the same as we did in the previous lecture where we initialized an array by giving the values of the elements in that array. But strings are special. In order for things like printf to understand how to print an array properly, it doesn't know how long it is, so we have to terminate the array with a special character called backslash zero. Okay, let's initialize another one. Y. I'm sorry, I have an extra equal there. Okay. As opposed to doing the tedious thing of putting it character by character, you can simply say second, for example, and the backslash zero will be automatically inserted for us. Or we can say something like this. It's a little bit different. In the previous ones, you will get just enough memory stored for the number of characters that you've stated. Okay, but here we're actually stating we want 10 characters in an array. But we're not going to fill them all up. And we'll see the ramifications of that later. Now what I'd like to do is show different ways of printing this. Print string x. So let's define a function, print, st print string, and unlike an int here, we're going to be passing a character array, which is a string. And the way we do that is say this. We give it the name, say, f. That's arbitrary. We're saying we're passing a string to this function, and I need to point out that this is not call by value. This is call by reference. So you're actually passing in the address of the first location of the string, not a copy of the string. Okay, if you want to use printf to print this string, it is simple. You just use percent %s to denote string, and just give it the argument s. Now, I'd also like to print it out using put car, so we can see more of what's going on. So, for i equals 0, remember arrays always have the 0 location as the first location, not 1, 2, s, i, not equal to backslash i plus plus put car si and get rid of this and that's all we need for this so what are we saying here we want to increment i until we reach the end of the string. Again, the end of the string is denoted by a backslash zero character. So let's try this out. All right. Ah. Have there error here. Int i. Okay, let's compile. First. All right, that prints out. This is the first printed out with printf, and now this is using put car. Let's print the other strings. Okay, and everything works as we expect. What we're trying to show here is that printf is working in this manner. It is going through the array, denoted by s, until it reaches an end of string character, by, denoted by backslash zero, and printing the characters. 
But what I would like to show is, uh, is, is to do something different. Let's actually continue to go through memory and see what's there, not just stop at the backslash zero. So for each array, I want to actually go through two memory, or 20 memory locations and print out the values there. If string is not equal to the end of string character, I print it out, else I print out the end of string character. And that's denoted this way by when we use printf. What I'm saying is here, the reason I have backslash backslash is otherwise if I only if I only had backslash zero, it would try to interpret the backslash backslash as a special symbol. We don't want to, we just want to treat it as the literal backslash. So you have to put a backslash in front of a backslash to treat it as just one literal backslash. So we'll print out literally backslash zero. Okay. Let's see what happens when we do this. Oops. Again, an error. Okay, something very interesting is going on here. So when we look at the first string, x, which is first, you will notice that you get FIRST backslash zero. That's as we initialized it. But now I'm continuing to go through memory, looking at more memory locations, and you, what you'll see is stuff, um, a bunch of junk. You may or may not get the same values every time. You probably won't. Notice I'm getting different values every single time I do this, because every single time I run this code, it is using different portions of memory, and memory already has information in each location. Okay, and we're simply reading it. We're not changing that, but we are printing out what's in memory. Okay, let's look at the string y, which is second. Well, that's interesting. Notice that, as we expect, we get second backslash zero because we declared it over here. So it has the right size, and then first, but notice that first is coming right after second. So what happened here is that y was declared in memory, and then, I'm sorry, x was declared in memory, and then y was declared to be a little bit before it in memory. Now let's look at z. When I print that out, I'm getting more than just one backslash zero because I said I want 10 characters. Well, I'm getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm getting second, and then you notice I'm getting first. So z was actually allocated in memory to be right before second, and second was allocated to be in memory right before first. So we're seeing with this shows you how things are allocated in memory. They're allocated in consecutive chunks of memory, and again, every single time you run it, at least for the portions of memory where we aren't initializing it, we're getting arbitrary junk in there. And that's why initializing memory is always so important, because if you try to read beyond an array bound, you don't know what you're going to get. And if you try to write beyond an array bound, you can do rather horrible things to your code. Okay, let's end the, uh, the lecture there.